Thank you for agreeing to this interview as part of my history class at Sacramento City College. As part of this class, we are acting as working historians by doing this interview. Our goal is to create a record of the COVID era because we know this will be seen as a historic moment in the future. I have a few questions for you. Let's begin. When COVID started, what, ex what transition did you experience from in-person to remote work during COVID? Well, when COVID first hit, I was very busy. I was coaching a wrestling team, a softball team, and actually two softball teams. Uh, so in addition to working full-time as a teacher, so sports teams obviously ended rather rapidly. Um, School-wise, we went off of work for a few weeks as we transitioned to distance learning. Um, having to integrate everything from in-person to distance learning was definitely a challenge and a logistical issue, especially for the district. Um, but as far as transitioning the work, um, it just had to kind of take on a different mindset, a different scope of ways to present the same information. So challenging, uh, but engaging at the same time. And do you think that affected your ability to do your job? Do you think it changed the way that you think about it? It definitely changes the way I think about it. A lot of those practices I still try to maintain today in certain aspects uh, with making more stuff hybrid and, and, and using more digital resources in my current um, teaching profession. Now, it did, uh, it did make, you know, it was a very drastic change, especially, especially for students trying to adjust to this new way of learning. Um, fortunately, I work uh, with a, a group of people that does a really good job of providing quality education for students, but I feel like not everybody got that same experience. Let's just put it that way. And since I know you're also a parent on top of being a teacher, how do you think that COVID, the experience affected you as a parent? Um, it really made me um, double check a couple things in my life. Um, I had a, a very big realization that family time is important and a, a better work-life balance at times is probably necessary. Um, as a parent, obviously, I am uh, concerned about the safety of my, of my children um, from getting sick uh, and, and, and whatnot. I have a immunocompromised uh, child as well, which adds a, a, a different degree of, uh, of um, concern for sure. Um, it was a really interesting transition back into the classroom for my, uh, my kids, uh, personal children. They went back to school much sooner than, than I did as a teacher. Their school was back going hybrid um, very early on, um, whereas as my school that I worked at, uh, we were at home um, doing virtual teaching for a much longer period of time. So there was a, a definite uh, a give take in, in certain parts of it. And having all that happen and all those shifts in mindset, um, did your goals kind of change at all while you were going through the pandemic? I don't necessarily know if my goals changed. I would say during it, for sure it did. You know, at first it went from fear to, um, you know, concern to, um, you know, preventative measures. It, it, it did divide a lot of people along, um, you know, belief lines, whether it be political, spiritual, or whatever else. And, and, and so kind of understanding and, and changing my goals of understanding, I guess, kind of changed or uh, my opinions, especially of people um, changed and businesses changed. Um, so uh, I mean, a lot of things changed, I would say my, my goals, personal goals in life, I don't feel changed very much. Uh, but it definitely, um, definitely made you rethink and reevaluate things a little bit for sure. And did it change the way that you connect with your friends and your kids and your family um, and your community? Did it make you connect in new or different ways? Um, one thing that I did find myself doing more or I do find myself even still today doing more is making more phone calls. Um, so when it first happened, we were all on lockdown and, and shelter in place and all the other things. Um, I did talk to people on the phone that I hadn't talked to in a long time. I mean, shared text conversations, Facebook posts, stuff of that nature. But as far as actually like communication, um, yeah, I did. It, you know, I, I, I talked to my friends a little bit more frequently on the phone instead of just a text message. Um, you know, part of that's generational. Uh, I come from the generation where you do make phone calls still, but, but in addition to that, 
uh, we also, you know, I, I did find myself doing it more, reaching out to my family a little bit more um, and having conversations there. Uh, during the pandemic, we would have, you know, driveway parties or whatever, you know, where we have our, our local neighborhood would come and, and we'd all sit around a fire pit on the, on the you know, on somebody's driveway and be able to, to chit chat and communicate from distance, you know. Uh, I did parking structure uh, picnics, you know, with my my in-laws or, or, or whatever else or various other family members. So um, in that sense, yeah, we had to get creative, I guess you could say, on how to uh, how to actually interconnect. But like I said, really the driving factor is, is I find myself communicating uh, verbally and, and physically seeing people more often than I did before. Which is a positive thing, really. Def definitely is. I think we've uh, definitely become disassociated with each other um, as time has gone on. So how do you think that going through the experience of COVID has shaped you as an individual? So do you think you're the same person you were before March 2020? Or do you think you've gone through some personal shifts? You know, I, I wouldn't say that I've changed a whole lot. Um, like I said, more so my my belief system and what I believe in and seeing some of the belief system of even some of my my really closest friends you know uh, we don't see eye to eye on on some of this stuff again you know my family having to be very very dedicated and vigilant because of of healthcare issues and stuff like that within my household uh, not all of our friends understood that um, or will it were willing to understand that um, and and it also like I said as far as businesses go you know if you if you politicize your business or if you publicize your business's beliefs, you know, whether that's your personal belief that you're posting on a business's website, like I might not choose to support your business anymore if I, if it doesn't align with my, uh, with my beliefs, you know, so um, that kind of mindset changed. So my outlook on some people changed, I guess, uh, retrospectively, my outlook on myself changed a little bit in the same um, of, of what do I believe in, you know, where am I going to stand up and, and, and to what is going to be the most important thing for me, which, uh, which is my family and keeping them safe. And, and if people could not understand that or be on, on board with that, then, then, you know, some people in life had to, had to be let go. Yeah, definitely. And if you could relive the past two years, is there anything that you would do differently? I'm not going to lie. I took a lot of advantage of it, especially early on. We have a, an RV travel trailer and we, we went camping and we spent a lot of time with family together in campsites that were pretty vacant. Um, so we got to do a lot of different things where we got to travel around, uh, you know, greater California, um, spend some time with the family. So I think, I think that aspect of the, bringing the family together was, was a very big thing. Um, you know, being that I have, you know, 12 or 13 year old and a, and a 10 year old now, um, you know, life, uh, getting a chance to spend that much time with your kids, like that, that doesn't happen. It, it'll never happen again in my lifetime, um, that, that you get undivided attention with your kids like that. So I think a lot of it is, is, you know, I tried to maximize that time as much as I could. Um, I don't think necessarily I would change too much of what I did or didn't do during that time period. I feel like, um, you know, I feel like, if I had a map of how long everything was going to last, I would probably have done some of that stuff longer um, because I would have, I would have known that we had more time to, uh, to really focus in on those things. Um, I mean, it did get tiresome and boring and, and, and whatever else, but uh, again, having that chance to connect with family um, and to build better relationships uh, with people around me, I think is, is, was important and, and the thing that came out of it the most. Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts and your time. No I'm going to end this in just a moment. Uh, so this project for my history class is part of a collaboration with Stanford University and their life in quarantine global archive. So if you approve, uh, our interview will be housed online and we would be online content creators. If you don't want it shared, it will only go to my professor who is Holly Piscopo from Sacramento City College um, and is a Stanford fellow this year. So. I can give you her contact information if you're interested. So are you comfortable with me sharing it with the Stanford Collective or would you rather just go to my professor? No, you can share it with whoever. All right, thank you very much. No problem. I appreciate it. All right, have a good rest of the day. You too.